Compaction is the process of densifying soil by means of mechanical energy. That is, mechanical action, for example tamping, is imposed on the soil to increase the soil's mass density. We make an effort to increase the mass density because the stiffness and strength of the soil increase with increasing mass density. Increasing the mass density in turn translates to increasing the capacity of foundations and decreasing potential settlements, amongst other improvements. In addition, compaction causes a reduction in the soil's ability to conduct water through its pores. That is, the soil's hydraulic conductivity is reduced. This is specifically why soil is carefully compacted during the construction of earth dams. While building dams in LA in the 1930s, R. R. Proctor notes that the effectiveness with which a soil can be compacted, that is, densified by mechanical action, is dependent on the water content during compaction, the compactive effort imposed, and the soil type, namely the composition and gradation. In the lab, we routinely measure a soil's compactability by an impact compaction test called the Proctor test. We most often use the modified Proctor test, which was developed during World War I after its predecessor, the standard Proctor test. To perform the modified Proctor test, we do the following. We first obtain approximately 40 pounds of soil that passes the number 4 sieve. That is, all the particles in the soil must be smaller than 4.76 millimeters. We then determine the mass of the Proctor steel mold that we intend to use. The mold's volume is 1 30th of a cubic foot. We then divide the soil into at least six separate batches and we add water or remove water by drying to each batch so as to achieve a different water content in each batch. For example, batch number one with a water content of 5%, batch number two with a water content of 8%, etc. Typically, we want to have water contents that range between 5% and 18%. We must keep each prepared batch of soil in a sealed bag so that water is not lost by evaporation. We then divide batch number one into five portions. We take the first portion and place it in the mold. We tamp the soil in the mold 25 times with the modified Proctor hammer which weighs 10 pounds and drops 18 inches. We then take the second portion of batch number one, place it in the mold and compact it as we did the first portion. Then we compact the third portion, the fourth portion and finally the fifth portion, all in the same mold. Once finished, we scrape off the excess soil that protrudes from the top of the mold and weigh the mold with the soil inside. The mass of the soil, M, is therefore the mass of the mold and soil minus the mass of the mold alone, which was determined previously. The volume of soil is the volume of the mold, that is, one thirtieth of a cubic foot. The mass density of the compacted batch number one soil is the mass of the soil divided by the volume of the mold. And the dry mass density is the mass density divided by one plus the water content of that batch. At this point we have the coordinates of one point, a point that we will plot later. The coordinates are water content for batch 1, comma, dry mass density for batch 1. We must perform the compaction procedure described for all batches prepared. Thus, if we have six batches, we will end up with six points with known coordinates, water content, comma, dry density. We then create the compaction curve by plotting our points and drawing a best fit curve by hand. It is important that you do not simply join the points with lines. The compaction curve is unique for a given soil type, use method of compaction and applied compactive effort. Notice that the curve has a peak, therefore there is a compaction water content that optimizes the compaction process. That is to say, if the soil is compacted at the optimal water content, then the highest dry mass density achievable in the lab 
is obtained. This dry mass density is called the maximum dry density, rho d max. Rho d max is unique to a specific compactive effort and method. It does not necessarily reflect the maximum dry mass density that can be obtained in the field. This is because a different compactive effort and different means are used to compact the soil in the field. It is important to note that a soil compacted at the optimum water content is not fully saturated. That is, S is not equal to 1. To visualize the level of saturation with which a soil is compacted in the lab, we plot the so-called zero ervoids curve, the ZAV, next to the compaction curve. We do so by using the following equation. The dry mass density is equal to the mass density of solids divided by the water content plus 1 over the specific gravity of solids. In this equation, the water content is a variable that is used to create the zero ervoids curve. The ZAV must lie to the right of the compaction curve, as shown. As engineers, our primary job with respect to compaction is to give the contractor the information he or she requires to appropriately compact the soil in the field. In general, the engineer relays the compaction curve to the contractor and suggests a range of water contents with which the contractor will be able to compact the soil efficiently in the field. In addition, the engineer prescribes a relative compaction for the project. The relative compaction is the ratio of the dry mass density to be achieved in the field by the contractor to the dry mass density achieved in the lab. For example, let's say that a project calls for a relative compaction of 95%. The soil to be compacted in the field was tested in the lab and the maximum dry density obtained using modified proctor was 1760 kilograms per meter cubed. This means that the soil must be compacted in the field to a dry mass density of at least 1672 kilograms per meter cubed. In general, relative compaction figures are above 90%. The prescribed relative compaction is dependent on the project in question.